So you want to find out if Mordow is worth picking up, or if you should save your cash for something else. Throughout this video, I'll be talking about what this game has to offer, from gameplay, to game modes, fighting mechanics, class customization, controls, optimization, and some cons. By the end of the video, you'll know if this game is right for you, or if you should pass on it. To start off, Mordow is a medieval multiplayer combat game. Many have likened it to Chivalry, with its detailed combat and gore. Although this game feels far less buggy and looser in controls. Gameplay is the main appeal. Charging into battle with forged iron to slice, smash, or stab your way through your enemies. Blood will not only line the battlefield, but also your weapons as your team shouts into battle, leaving your enemies to cower and retreat with every weapon and insult thrown. No matter your choice of weapon, where it be a bow, catapult, sword, bar dice, hammer, or if you're the adventurous type, a frying pan. Many weapons are at your disposal. Each weapon takes its own mastering and having their own niches in combat. Each swing of a weapon feels satisfying and powerful. Every block feels like you're escaping death and enraging your enemies all at the same time. The combat against other players feels challenging, yet not being too difficult to get the basics down. They even give you an in-depth and funny tutorial that you really shouldn't pass on after you first start up the game. We're perfectly safe at the moment. <clears throat> well, I suppose that moment is past. The combat in this game is really about skill and using your head. Running into battle by yourself will let you get a couple of kills and possibly see some funny friendly fire, but won't have you living long. Often you will be left on the edge of your seat, clinging onto the anticipation of your enemy's next move. It's very addicting and can be an adrenaline rush. Now that we've talked about the main appeal of the gameplay, let's dive into the different game modes. Currently, there are eight game modes that you can choose from. If you click on matchmaking in the main menu, you'll have two tabs available to you, casual and ranked. Under casual, you will find frontline, horde, invasion, and battle royale. Under Ranked, you will find Duel. To play Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, or Skirmish, you'll have to use the server browser and use the game mode filter. Let's start out with the most popular one, which is Frontline. Frontline places you on a team of up to 32 other players depending on the server you're playing. You will choose between Iron Company or Free Guard. Once in the match, you and your team will have to fight to capture objectives placed throughout the map. To capture an objective, you and your teammates will have to stay within a circle located on the objective itself. As you stay within the objective, you will see your team start to gain claim to it. Enemies, however, can contest the objective, or even outnumber you on the point, causing it to begin to capture for their side. Some objectives, however, will require a secondary task to lay claim to them. Some maps will require that you free prisoners, lead a cart of explosives, or break barricades before being able to capture the next one. Some maps will also require you to complete one last task, like burning down tents, killing a VIP AI, such as a king or a warden, or delivering explosives to an enemy's base. Objectives aren't the only thing that matter, however. Each team starts off with 1,000 points at the beginning of a match. The number of objectives held will determine how quickly those points go down. Teammates dying will also cause those points to be depleted. You can win a match by either capturing all the objectives or bleeding the other team of points. This will be the easiest match to come across and tends to be the most populated. The game mode Invasion is very similar to Frontline. However, in Frontline, two teams can recapture objectives that they have lost. In Invasion, there is an attacker and a defender team. When the attackers capture an objective, the defenders can't reclaim them. Now it wouldn't be a 2019 game without a battle royale mode. All jokes aside, the game mode leaves players to fend on their own, finding weapons and armors to survive throughout their match. Weapons and armor won't be easy to come by. Your health will only regenerate after finding bandages or laying waste to an opponent. This is a great way to test your one-on-one -on -one skills and is a break from fighting off teams of people. As the timer runs down and bodies pile up, the map size will decrease, forcing the last few players to fight it out in glory, leaving only one victorious. The next game mode is Horde. 
This game mode came as a shock to me, but yet a welcome one. You and a band of other players work together to survive waves of enemies charging at you. With each round, you earn yourself some money, allowing you to purchase better weapons, armor, and bandages. All the equipment is scattered throughout each match, forcing you to traverse on your own to find your desired weapon. Now let's talk about Skirmish. Skirmish is a game mode that pits two teams against each other in a round-based match. During these rounds, you will only have one life. The team that's able to eliminate all the opposing players will win the round. The match will play out until one team has won seven rounds in total. Duel is currently the only ranked game mode in Mordown. It sets you up against another player and first to five rounds wins. It takes 10 matches before you can find yourself a rank. This game mode will push you to your limits and challenge you to be a better player. The next mode we'll talk about is Team Deathmatch. In this mode, two teams fight it out to win a thousand points on the scoreboard to leave them victorious. Respawns are active during this game mode, so you won't have to wait to get into the action. The last game mode we'll be talking about is called Deathmatch. Just like the previous mode, you fight your way to the top of the scoreboard. However, you're left to do it by yourself in a free-for-all. Keep in mind, not all deathmatch servers are specifically run and swing. There are a few that are dedicated specifically to duels, and you'll find yourself getting kicked if you don't adhere to their rules. So please pay attention and keep that in mind when joining them. Now let's start talking about the fighting mechanics. As mentioned before, this game functions very similar to Chivalry and Mountain Blade Warband. The direction in which you look and click will matter. Left click lets you swing left to right, depending on the direction that you are looking. Rolling your scroll wheel forward will cause your character to stab in front of them. Rolling the scroll wheel backwards will make your character perform a devastating overhead swing. If you have a page back button on your mouse, your character will perform an upward swing. If using your hands isn't enough, Pressing F will kick your enemies backwards, often great for dealing with shielded enemies. When you find yourself on the receiving end of an attack, you can right click to block it. Every block in attack has a specific cooldown time attached to it. When you block, the moment must be right before your enemy makes contact. Block too early and your head will be rolling across the ground. The same can be said with attacks. Your character is not a robot. Swings will cost you stamina and will make you wait a second before performing another attack. Creating a rhythm on the battlefield that leaves you ever so wary during those vulnerable seconds between blocks and attacks. Attacks can be faked to trick your enemy into the wrong timing. In the first half of your attack, if you hit Q, it will cause the attack to stop, allowing you to attack quickly after your opponent accidentally guards a false attack. This really makes the fights interesting and every opponent feel like a worthy adversary. About three-fourths of the weapons in the game have a secondary attack stance or function by pressing R. For large swords, it allows you to use the blunt edge. For pulled weapons, it allows for a longer or closer reach. For some lighter weapons, it allows for you to throw the item, such as a small axe, short spear, or rapier. Once as you feel that you have mastered one weapon, many more will be waiting for you. After a significant amount of playtime, you will be able to understand the timing of every weapon. When it comes to weapons such as the bows, it's not as easy as you first initially think. To make using a recurve or longbow more difficult, your character will sway for the first few seconds as the arrow is drawn back. You will have a few brief seconds of stability before your character's arms begin to shake and aiming becomes chaotic. If you wish to cancel a bow's shot, simply right click. Just like the melee weapons, these bows have a rhythm to them. There is a crossbow in the game as well. It allows for a more stable shot, however, it takes longer to reload and gives you less ammo. Scattered throughout each map, you will see a replenishment box that allows you to refill your arrows and throwable equipment. Now it's time to dive into class customizations. Once you've chosen your team in a match, you will have to pick a class. When first starting out, you'll see some pre-built classes to choose from. These classes cannot be modified, however, they allow you to use weapons you have not unlocked yet. When a match completes, you will earn yourself some coin and experience. The coin allows for you to buy new weapons and armor. Some equipment will require that you reach a certain level before you can purchase them. Once as you've purchased some equipment, you will then be able to create your own custom class that can be named and adjusted to your heart's content. Weapons, throwables, perks, and armor do cost stat points. What I mean by this is that each class has a limit on how many points can be spent to create it. Each class has 48 skill points available. 
You can have many different classes saved, so you won't be limited to a couple custom ones. Small things to note is that your character's physical appearance can be adjusted as well as some cosmetic pieces. I personally love it when games allow you to make a character that is unique. We don't need 64 players with the same looking guy. That would just be strange. If you find yourself short on stat points in regards to weapons, keep in mind that you can pick up weapons on the battlefield. You are given three usable slots for weapons and throwable equipment. So if you want to be a decked out knight with perks and scavenge the battlefield for weapons, you can. There are even weapons placed throughout the battlefield that can be picked up. Other things worth mentioning is the toolbox and we can call them environmental weapons. Toolboxes are equipment that allow you to build up to six items at a time on a battlefield, such as a spike or a barrier. Arrow turrets can be created as well. A little tip, hit R to cycle through the buildable items. Now let's talk about some environmental weapons, which are the catapult, ballista, and mortar. The catapult allows for you to take out enemies and friendlies within a certain area. The ballista shoots one powerful arrow that can insta-kill any enemy, including enemies on horses. Mortars, which are very similar to catapults, will send an explosive shot to clear a small area of any living being. Let's talk about the controls. If you're the type of person who enjoys adjusting your keyboard binds, then you're in luck. They allow you to not only adjust every keyboard bind, but there's even some empty ones that aren't used in the default controls. If you prefer a controller, don't worry, they have you covered, and the experience is actually quite enjoyable from the start. Just like key bindings, they do allow you to adjust your gamepad settings through the main menu. Some noteworthy things since we're talking about controls is the gestures and voice dialogue that can be initiated with very specific keys. You can either gesture at a teammate by pressing X, shout by pressing V, or select audio dialogue to yell insults at your enemies by pressing C. Your efforts are as feeble as thy manhood. X and C both have multiple pages of dialogue that you can switch through and gestures. Since you get to select your character's voice, each line of dialogue for each voice is different. There are some hilarious insults out there. Even selecting the same action multiple times will bring you through a couple different recorded lines of dialogue. You move with the grace of a drunken peasant. Your wife provided a fitter challenge. Now it's on to optimization. Load times can take a bit when joining a match if you're using a conventional hard drive. If you have a solid state drive on your computer, I highly recommend installing Mordow on there. Of course, if you have a slower internet connection, wait times will be longer. Entry level game computers should have no issue running the game above 30 frames per second. Some players, however, have noticed performance problems that only occur on specific maps, and usually experience performance drops when newer maps are added to the game. The game uses the Unreal 4 engine, which has a great track record for optimization. Speaking of performance, let's move on to the minimum and recommended hardware that it takes to run this game. The game requires a 64-bit processor, and a 64-bit version of Windows, from Windows 7 to Windows 10. For the processor, an Intel Core i5-4670 or an AMD equivalent such as a Ryzen 5 1400. For the RAM, you need 8GB. For a graphics card, an NVIDIA GTX 680 or AMD equivalent such as a Radeon R9 2080. The recommended requirements for an Intel i5-6600K or AMD equivalent such as a Ryzen 5 3600X. For RAM, 16GB. A graphics card, you'll want an NVIDIA GTX 1060 or an AMD equivalent such as the Radeon RX 580. The game is 25 gigabytes in size, so make sure you have that drive space available, as well as some room for any additional updates to be released in the future. As long as you're playing on a rig that has the most basic requirements for modern gaming, you should be able to play this game without any headaches, allowing for a fun and well-crafted experience. If you're interested in knowing what components I have in my own rig, I'll put them in the description down below. Now that we're nearing the end of the review, I want to go over some cons that I noticed while playing. Team killing is a factor that is great to leave in the game. However, there is an issue with players team killing purposely without repercussions. At the moment, you can kick undesirable players, however, the method of doing so is absurd. You have to open up the console and either look up or have the commands memorized. From there, a vote to kick them can be initiated and will appear on the screen. This is a feature that needs to be simplified for the normal player. I've seen some players go as far as using a long string of special characters to make kicking them more tedious. Please, if any dev is watching, add this to your to-do list. The next one is a bit of a mixed opinion, but is something to consider. There is no voice chat in game. 
Only text and gestures can be initiated by hitting the right sequence of keys. I understand this helps with immersion, however a similar game such as Holdfast Nations at War has allowed at the very least for some local cons. This would allow for great team communication, and anybody who didn't want to hear voice chat could have a voice slider similar to the other audio sliders you already have built into the game. Now let's talk about the final verdict whether this game is right for you. If you're the type of person who enjoys a good challenge and is tired of the world of FPS, which dominates the market at the moment, this game is a breath of fresh air, challenging you to your wit, timing, and ability to master different weapons. If you do any type of multiplayer PC gaming, this game is one I honestly believe you should have in your library. I've spent many a night staying up till 4am on a workday just because I couldn't get enough of the rush when charging into battle or anticipating my enemy's next move. If you enjoyed the video and want more, hit that subscribe button and the bell. Let us know what game we should review next, or what you think of Mordell down in the comments. We love talking to you guys. Until next time guys, I'm AJ from Those Awkward Gamers, and I'm going to leave it to Lootmaster to play us out.